Ladies and gentlemen, recently there was a cartoon in a newspaper where they made fun of us. They said we wanted to join the elite club. Do you remember that? Nobody saw it? When our moon missions were happening? Because they were unhappy. 75 years we have come here. And if you look at 75 years, you will go to the whole world. And then another cartoon came in, which actually gave it back to them. It is not against anybody. We should actually take it against us that we are now going to show them. So, recently in the news, we were so proud. I remember when Chandrayaan 2 didn't make it, it was around midnight and we all were in tears. And then Chandrayaan 3 happened. And look at that dedication, the phenomenal, you know, effort to quickly come back on their feet, take their learnings. But two and three were preceded by even a more phenomenal mission. You know why? They sent the man and the moon in 1969. They said we learnt a lot about the moon. They yet couldn't detect water on it. It was us who showed the world what it means to really put the world's most best economical with the most reliable systems on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like all of you to stand up and give a round of applause for this gentleman was involved with the Chandrayaan 1 mission and he is here to have a conversation with us. His topic is Man to Moon and Beyond, Scaling the Unscalable, ex-Israel, ex-NASA, Dr. Syed Makhbub Ahmad. Sir, please take the center stage. Give a round of applause, everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you. Please have uh, be seated. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm here uh, purely because of one gentleman who is uh, responsible, uh, Dev Jyoti Das. He's my student at University of Hyderabad uh, and he has put me on this platform. Uh, I feel uh, as if I have got my Guru Dakshina. Such a huge platform, such a huge platform uh, and uh, I'm a bit nervous, little bit nervous uh, because of, uh, not because I'm among the best technocrats, not because we have a lot of admin guys and all various different type of people, uh, only because uh, I was asked to speak, I was given, I am given 20 to 25 minutes. I have 30 slides, which I can cover in 25 minutes. And I got five to six anecdotes. Uh, I, I wish and hope uh, that they will permit me to go ahead with the anecdotes also. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll finish everything in 25 minutes. That's the plan. And uh, let's hope. That's the Israel way, right? We finish it on time and we make sure it happens. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I, I think now no, I got the trick from him. That, that, so uh, I made the instrument work on the moon, still I have to learn this. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Can I have the first slide, please? First slide. Can I have the first slide? Yeah, please go back to the first slide. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I just, uh, before I make uh, a presentation normally, uh, I make some kind of a platform. Uh, on that platform, I like to uh, build my story. Uh, and that platform is the following. Uh, moon is enigmatic. Uh, people have always been trying all kinds of things with moon. Uh, poets have been writing wonderful poems. We know Muhammad Rafi became so popular among all the ashiks for the Chaudhvi Kachand. Uh, and, and of course, everybody has his own way of looking at uh, uh, his uh, mashuka or whatever, uh, connecting with the moon and all that. Now, moon is also uh, a, a goal post for technocrats. Uh, I, I just like to take you back uh, in time 400 years ago, uh, when Galileo built the first space scope, they call. Galileo just took his telescope, looked at the moon. And uh, he said that there are no lakes on the moon. There are no oceans on the moon. It's all barren land. So uh, moon that way uh, 
uh, intrigued human right from the day we we wanted to our inquisitive inquisitiveness was always there so we wanted to always try out our best shot at the moon and we all know about the cold war between russia the, the ussr and us where we also know who was the winner and all so th that went on in fact uh, within 2 years of land uh, trying with the very first satellite sputnik uh, the russians uh, attempted to go to the moon and they were successful in reaching the moon so uh, after the cold war was all over uh, there was a lull of almost uh, 15 to 20 years and then in 2007 china went to the moon and then here comes the story my story starts from 2008 president kalam kalam was the president for for us and then we had just finished the pokhran test india wanted to show it to the world that uh, i am sorry for this president kalam's views uh, i this is my way of interpreting president kalam's views i may be wrong uh, so forgive me for uh, if i over uh, if i do a overboard of statement president kalam said that we are doing exceedingly well in it it's okay but he was not quite happy that the youth is all going after IT. He wanted Indian youths to come or to embrace STEM. Uh, in STEM, you ha do have technology. But it is typical President Kalam's idea and said that if India goes to the moon, we would do wonders. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I have been seeing, I have been following very closely. You got to believe me that after the Chandrayaan 1 success, the application or the, uh, the people applying to ISRO has went by tenfolds. There are a lot of guys who wants to go to ISRO and work for ISRO because the planetary exploration, the lunar success and India going to planet Mars in its first attempt has really, really caught up with India, uh, with every youth. And this is all the uh, Kalam's, President Kalam's ploy. He, he, he intentionally did it. And we are so thankful. I'm standing here purely because of him. Uh, when India was going to the moon, uh, he said that let's not just go to the moon, let us have a moon impact probe. Let us send a messenger which will go and fall on the moon. So I was part of that moon impact probe mission where I built an instrument and I'll take you through those. And with that, let me see if this is working well. Uh, the next slide I have pressed, yeah. I, I want all of you to remember this picture. This is a fabulous picture uh, which I, I want all of you to remember. As a child, I, I remember Moon actually means humans going to the moon. You see Buzz Aldrin taking the picture of Neil Armstrong. You almost see Buzz Aldrin in, the, in that his face mirror. You can see Buzz Aldrin and the guy is standing like that, the astronaut. For me, it is the same picture for India also. Right at the center, right at the center, uh, if this is working, the laser is... Uh, okay, right at the center, you have a picture snapped by Chandrayaan 2 orbiter. We have an orbital high-resolution camera which will give half a meter resolution image. So you can see that Vikram landing picture at the center, lander location, is that pic is taken from above the moon at 100 kilometers above. And the picture on the right, can I go back? Please go back to the slide. Yeah. So uh, on the right-hand side, you see the Vikram lander's picture clicked by Pragyan rover. So this is an amazing achievement for India, where, where it, for me, uh, whenever I show, I see this picture, it's like India's Neil Armstrong movement. We, we, we have reached the moon. We, we clicked the picture of the moon. Okay. So, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, uh, yeah. So, okay, next slide, please. Yeah. So, uh, what I plan to do is, I got seven to eight slides which will take you through what all India tried to do in Chandrayaan 1 and 2. And then I will concentrate more on Chandrayaan 3 where India, uh, ISRO took a kind of a beating where uh, in Chandrayaan 2, uh, there was a failure uh, and the Vikram could not land. That was a real, real uh, kind of a, uh, let me use the word uh, bash, uh, which uh, ISRO said that we want to do it right. And I... I I want to impress upon you that how Im immaculately ISRO did their homework and how they came out. So let me go through the first year slides. And here I'm trying to show that 
India started in 2008, maybe you can call it as a political, you may call whatever that decision is. India went to the moon and but they didn't know what all to do on the moon. That's why you can see that six instruments were all from abroad. Only five uh, experiments, five uh, missions were from India out of the 11 and uh, I was part of the moon impact probe uh, and that's how it all started in 2008. Next. Next one. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you that when India went to the moon, India did an amazing job because if you Google and check, there was a Ranger mission which US carried out. In the Ranger mission, uh, US made, NASA made six continuous attempts to go past moon, take the pictures of the moon and come back. You got to believe this. Please Google right away and check. Ranger mission, NASA failed consecutively for six times. Can you believe this? So we had one hiccup in Chandrayaan 2 and we took it very, very seriously. But it takes a whole lot of effort to be able to go to the moon and take that picture. And uh, this is, you can see that going India going to the moon. And India took the best pictures ever clicked by uh, the humans, f uh, almost a meter resolution and cartographic images. You can see those three, three dimensional effect, craters within the craters and all. So it was an amazing success for India as far as the Chandrayaan-1 mission go. Next. So this is where uh, moon impact probe, which is uh, no more there, it has actually fallen. I want to tell, inspire a lot of kids and all and say that this box which you are seeing on the right hand side, it has fallen on the moon right next to the South Pole, right next to the South Pole. There is a little bit of controversy that Vikram has not landed at South Pole and all. No big deal as a matter of fact. This is the one which has landed right next, I'll show, show it to you with the proof where exactly it landed. And this was, uh, this was truly President Kalam's brainchild that India would go and touch the moon. Next. Yeah, moon impact probe, what was the idea? Once you go to the moon, revolve around the moon and you get separated from the mother spacecraft and have a spin, spun around, you'll be spinning around and then have an impact very close to the South Pole. And if I just uh, tell you the results, we impacted at a place almost two, two and a half kilometers from the place we intended to impact. It's just like hitting a golf ball from ISRO's headquarters into the swimming pool in Delhi's best five-star hotel, you take it. We hit it, that was the accuracy, to, to be uh, put it uh, in right perspective. Next. Yeah, so these are the pictures, first time ever the color pictures of the moon taken by a commercial camera uh, attempted by the VSSC scientist. Uh, never moon had been taken in color pictures, a uh, couple of pictures, but I want to just run through. Next. Yeah, uh, this is the proof where we are trying to say that uh, when I compare the pictures of what, has, what all has been taken from the ground and the pictures taken by the moon impact probe, I can establish very exactly where exactly the impact has fallen. You can see the red spot that is the impact and you can almost see at the bottom, left to bottom, that is exactly the south pole. I'll show you in another picture. Next one. So here is a picture which is taken by American Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. You can see right at the South Pole is there. If you go uh, on the right hand side, you can see that moon impact probe impact. It impacted just three to four kilometers in the diagonal way uh, as compared to the South Pole. You can see we, we didn't want to f have an impact in Schumacher. You can see Schumacher crater. Uh, 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 respecting the Schumacher who was the first gentleman, first human to walk all the way down to the South Pole uh, to Antarctica and all. Uh, so we had an impact at a place called Malapat Mountain, right there the impact took place. Next. Yeah, so uh, I just like to take you through three slides where what exactly I did for the uh, Chandrayaan 1 mission. Uh, so we built an instrument called CHASE, which means Chandra's Altitudinal Composition Explorer. This is for the first time ever that a commercial instrument is built, is conceptualized and meant for moon. And everybody was laughed at us by saying that nobody would do this. We did it purely because we were in desperation. We had only three years to build one instrument which should go and fall on the moon and we said that let's go for the best instrument in the world and qualify it for the space. And this uh, space-born instrumentation involves huge amount of efforts and that's all we did. I just want to show you by a slide or so. Next. So you can see that to be able to make uh, instrument work in the space, for that matter, on the moon, you, you put a lot of demand. It, it, it requires huge amount of expertise. You characterize it first, you ruggedize it, 
there were problems uh, so in data communication and then you cross this Lakshman Rekha of thermo vacuum test and vibration test. Uh, my, my wife is sitting right here in the audience. I remember that uh, my son was almost on the deathbed and I, my instrument was crossing, was to cross the thermo vacuum test and uh, I had to choose whether to come to Hyderabad or to stay for the thermo vacuum test which will take place once in a month. If I miss that bus, my instrument would not have been qualified for moon. I remember I told my wife that I am not coming today. I may take a day or so. I made sure that this instrument passes the test and I feel as if standing on the Mount Everest. Yeah, I, I want to just uh, tell my wife and uh, uh, sort her uh, pardoning me that uh, uh, sometimes you really go mad uh, uh, as if I'm trying to prove that this instrument is more uh, close to me than my son. I, sp I had spoken to my brother. My brother said that he worked in Saudi Arabia. He said that I have seen asthmatic attacks, but don't, don't, don't you just just uh, hold on. Nothing much will happen. He, he will he will just come over it. And uh, I don't know whether I listened to my brother well, whatever happened, but but everything went on well. And the guy is in Intel now in Austin. Uh, next one. Next slide, yeah. So, uh, since a lot of technocrats are there, we did a classic reverse engineering. If uh, Dev Jyoti is there, can I go over a couple of minutes more? Yeah, this is for the benefit of a lot of guys who are aspiring to become uh, startup fellows. So, here is the case where we had a problem of uh, removing the, uh, the software uh, which was supplied by the vendor and that was communicating. We had a uh, microprocessor, ARM microprocessor, which was a silly microprocessor having a lot of data uh, which was to be sent at the time of powering. It was not residing on the instrument. So when you power it on, a huge amount of data will get transferred from the PC to the hardware. So uh, we didn't know what all is going on between the, uh, from the instrument and the computer. And we, we can't send the computer to the moon. Every gram you send it to the moon, uh, you have to pay a huge price. So the reverse engineering was, I googled, the Google was not available in VSSC Trivandrum. So I came back home and stayed middle of the night. I had a, that LAN uh, BSNL connection in the night sitting and trying to see what are all there. One German young boy had come up with an idea which is called serial sniffer software. That guy said that all the IT companies in those days, the IT guys are coming and working and they are not working for his company and they are only reading the newspaper, Malayalam Manorama. I don't know what it is, Siyasat Daily. So uh, being a CEO, I want to know what the hell my employees are doing. To tap my employees, that guy had written this program, Serial Sniffer Software. So uh, I took the, the, uh, the earlier version and then tried to tap the data and tried to switch on my instrument. And uh, it didn't work. We almost, we were on the almost one month we delayed and the project guy said that if you want to send the computer also, to hell with you, just get out of here. So then I found out, we figured out, one guy told us in ISRO headquarters, hey, there is a problem. When you shake hand with the instrument, there is a baud rate and then there is, uh, there is uh, one more set where you have to flip and when you transfer the data, it will again switch over the baud rate. So if you look at the combinations at baud rate and parity, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I was not getting the word parity. So if I see the combination of baud rate parity, there are umpteen number of combinations. I can't try out and then get at the time of handshake what I'm using for data transfer what I'm using. So I, I solved the problem. I can't share it. In fact, my wife is a PhD. Even with her, I have not shared. This is actually ISRO's. Uh, proprietary thing I, I can't share with any of you guys but we solved this when we solved in ISRO headquarters they said that boy you guys have really solved one of the best reverse engineering problem and hence we replaced it that with the FPGA you can see that next okay yeah so the instrument which we built was one of the best in the world and I'm not fooling all of you people because you don't belong to science or anything uh, these this instrument if you if I compare to the best in the class uh, the one which actually worked on Earth's atmosphere Jupiter and Saturn our instrument is 100 times better dynamic range and it is almost 10,000 times better sensitivity and very small uh, just like I, I make people laugh the guy did so much of laughing with you guys I have he left no room for me to, to play that. So it's like a Sachin Tendulkar uh, as compared to Matthew Hayden. So you need a small guy who can really give that big punch. Anyway, next. Next. Yeah. So uh, this is the, my baby uh, which is there in my lap, which is no more there on the earth. It has fallen on the moon. 
This is the instrument I built. Yeah, next. So this instrument went on to find water, discover water on the moon. There were some hiccups and all. There is no time for me to discuss all that. Even though this instrument, uh, uh, without any doubt, it, it found abundance amount of water, which is abundance actually means from instrument point of view, it is trace amount of water. We didn't find lakes or rivers and all. But uh, it did work and you can see the direct evidence of water. But the credit of finding water doesn't lie with this instrument or with us. I fought it back with the journal which did the injustice to the Indian instrument. Uh, I wish I could go into the details. Let's ignore about all that. But uh, believe me, this is the one which found water on the uh, moon for the first time. Next. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's come back to Chandrayaan 2. India was to go to Chandrayaan moon again, but in between India had an opportunity to go to planet Mars. There was a huge things at, the, at stake for the uh, uh, scientists to say that is there a life on planet Mars? And India wanted to catch up with that bandwagon. India, ISRO wanted to see uh, and ISRO built state of the art five instruments and they reached Mars. I India became the first country ever to reach planet Mars. No other country had ever uh, reached in their first attempt. India did that and uh, it took a lot of time. From after 2008, you can see that India went to moon second time in 2019. Next. So, uh, so we took a ride on uh, the so-called GSLV Mark III, amazing rocket and all. These slides are for student, uh, college students and all and, and it will suffice for you guys also. Then uh, just to say the least that this is one of the fabulous rockets, very powerful. India was trying for the first time ever. They closed their eyes and said that let's go for it. They did it and they could carry a lot of uh, lander, orbiter and of course the rover by virtue of this rocket. Next. Yeah. So there are, uh, you can see that this time India came up with a fabulous idea, built 13 instruments right here uh, on Indian soil, no problems, everything was all there in the face and all the instruments I wish, this is all I do, I'm an instrument scientist, I wish I could spend a lot of time, I don't have time, so believe me the instruments were all good, they all worked. Next. Yeah, I, I, there's no time. I think uh, you all guys know I don't want to spend time. How did we go to the moon? We went in, the, in that Mangalyan film, if you have seen. We, we went to the moon in a cheapest way, easiest way, which many people didn't believe when we were going to the moon for the first time. But the guys at ISRO were damn sure that they'll be able to reach. And uh, the first time when we went, we had a PSLV, which is thousand times less in uh, thrust as compared to the GSLV Mark III. Uh, and so India came up with the idea of slowly, slowly raising the orbit and then catching up uh, close to the moon and get captured by the moon and then shrink the orbit again. And then last phase you try to uh, land on the moon. Next. Yeah, so uh, I am almost getting uh, close to what I, I intend to say. Uh, so landing on an uh, extraterrestrial body throws a lot of challenges. I wish I could spend more time. I'm just trying to say that uh, barring couple of successes, the very first success, where curiosity was one of the amazing attempt by humans to land on planet Mars. Uh, later, uh, Europeans tried to land on Mars, they failed. Uh, Israelis tried to land on moon uh, just before Chandrayaan 2 they too failed. So there are a lot of problems. i just tell you what the problem is in one minute or so. Next slide. So uh, what is the problem? The problem of landing on a foreign object is the following. So this is all the crux of what I intend to tell, impress upon you people, that why ISRO has caught the attention of all the people and all. How amazing it was on part of ISRO that they landed on the moon. The trouble is the following. When you are revolving around the moon, your orbital speed is 6,100 kilometers per hour. Now you started from 30 kilometers over the moon. Slowly, slowly you have to reorient and go to the place of landing. And then you have to reduce that 6,000 kilometers per hour to almost none. And when you go close to the surface, you were, so what do you do? I do it, you can see on the right hand side, my orbital velocity is forward motion. If I fire a rocket in the same forward motion, it's called retro firing. I, I feel as if I'm getting a break. So retro firing, I, I, I stop my forward velocity. Retro firing, stop my velocity. So you can see on the left hand side that as you are coming down from 30 kilometers to the almost the surface where I want to land, I'm continuously firing the retro rocket. You might have seen guys uh, moving, hovering over the lake, humans. Uh, with some kind of retrofiring under their feet. 
So if you just keep on firing, retro firing from your feet, I can jump from that building. Uh, I don't know, I'll have to first try on the lake and then jump from the building. So the guy who is trying on the lake also can't jump. So that's the retro firing technology. So that's all people do to land. Any miscalculation, you're finished. Space is so unfavorable. Space is so ruthless. Any mistake, you're gone. You're absolutely finished. That's all made it in Chandrayaan 2. They, they did everything meticulously correct. Landing at 2.1 kilometers, they missed it. They got finished. Next. So, yeah, and the worst part for Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 also, ISRO took a challenge that we want to land at a place where nobody else had landed. This will prove that point by saying that Apollos and all landed around the equator of the moon and couple of probes from Russia could land closer to the south and India wanted to land very close to the south pole. Uh, why south pole only? Because uh, uh, there are a lot of signature, uh, there are a lot of theories which say that if you can go to south pole, you can find buried ice in the craters at the south pole. Uh, and that is the reason Moon Impact Probe also sl got slammed at the South Pole. Artemis program, US is spending $5 billion as I speak to you and they want to have an outpost close to the South Pole. Next. Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, we, we were not knowing so much about what exactly happened to Chandrayaan 2 and all. In the recent past, the chairman of ISRO came on public meetings and said that we failed in landing on the moon purely because the sequence design which we, we, we actually made for had a flaw. And he said that that flaw is rectified. So after two slides, I got another three more slides. So maybe five or six slides. So I'll wind up my presentation. There, conclusively, the ISRO's guys realized what the problem was and they rectified it. Next slide. Yeah, so this is the, again, uh, uh, from GSLV Mark III, they came back to a fabulous rocket which is called Launch Vehicle Mark III. Launch Vehicle Mark III is the rocket which will give you least amount of vibrations, which will take, it is for Gaganyan, for humans also. So this is the rocket which will give you a smooth ride into the space and on that road, the Chandrayaan-3, which you can see that it's there standing right on the top nose of the rocket. Next slide. So, uh, so uh, landing uh, on the moon thanks to artificial intelligence and a huge amount of sensors we, they all have. So they have a aerospace engineering had a thing called guidance navigation control. So what I do is I have set of sensors, they keep on giving me all the inputs. Then I have a sequencer. My sequencer will actually follow all the inputs, it will take all the inputs and then it will independently take decisions about what to do. What do you want to do? You are expected to actually uh, have a soft landing. And for soft landing, what do I do? I got to fire a retro, uh, retro rocket. Retro rocket is a very powerful rocket, it will give you a jolt. If you just keep on firing uh, mindlessly, uh, that's what happened to Chandrayaan 2, then you topple and then you will never be able to land. So you have to, so there is a rough firing, there is a gentle firing. So combination of rough firing, gentle firing and keep on knowing that what is your velocity with which you are going. So next slide if I go to, one second, one second, one second, can you go back, can you go back? Yeah, so, uh, so they, they had this sequencers, three sequencers, they said that they get a real time guidance that what exactly is happening. If there is any deviation, then switch over to sequence two which will solve your problems because things are not going well. They had a uh, almost Mrita Sanjeevini type of a solution where they said everything fails. Then they had an emergency sequencer which will only make sure that the retro firing is taking place and it's just like a blind man going and just stopping at a place where you asked him to stop. And you have asked him to actually land at South Pole. That was the sequence three which never got invoked, but the, that's the reason the chairman of ISRO was all laughing and saying that this time we are going to land. The guy was having no stress. If you recall the TV show when Chandrayaan 3 landed, the guy was absolutely stress-free. Anyway, uh, so next. So these are the sensors. I wish I could go into the details and all. Believe me, these are state-of-the-art sensors. Most of them are made in India. And these sensors will tell you what is your velocity, what is your acceleration. They had fantastic cameras which will tell you what exactly is happening. As I know the camera, I know, and I, let's say I'm asked to uh, land at the guys who are operating the computer. So I know that as I see this pattern, I'm this far from, away from them. So the AA will play calculate and tell me that, okay, since you're so far, your, your fuel is this much, control this much of speed. 
ओके यू हैव लॉट ऑफ फ्यूल एंड देन ओके नो प्रॉब्लम जस्ट कीप विद इन द योर वेलोसिटी रेंज ऑल दोज डिसीजन वर ऑल पुट इन एंड दैट वॉज टू वर्क प्रॉपरली नेक्स्ट या so the, they also had a couple of uh, i got three more four more slides please hold on and then i'm through i'm through okay so they said that instead of landing on a given spot try to land on a strip which is 4 kilometers by 2.5 kilometers is as if a plane is landing uh, and where to find the strips you can see that they have actually found out from their orbital high resolution camera where all those flat strips are there otherwise you go and fall in a crater the moon is absolutely full of craters i wish i could show the picture but you can see here also there are a lot of craters so once you end up in a crater you're finished anyway so your mission is failed so all those homeworks were carried out next okay so this is uh, a yeah, they also came up with uh, extra sensor extra communication tool they also had huge amount of fuel so that they they will have a good control to be able to actually hover wait for a while and then move away and then slowly land this was not there in chandrayaan 2 hence uh, the sequencer told that since you are left with this much of fuel only for the heck of it try to go and land and they they smashed they smashed on the south pole south pole so this extra fuel also was very helpful so they were prepared on every front next one yeah so they did lot of modeling as we are talking about ai and all that you could actually sit and model so they they did lot of modeling by saying that no matter from where i start no matter from where i start i start moving away from my uh, track also will i be able to land at the place of my choice they did thousands of uh, runs and they found out that yes they can land exactly at the place where they have decided to land this is the modeling next one these most all the slides are from somnath chairman of isro these are not my slides believe me uh, the guy was so spot on he was spot on so if you look at this, uh, this so this is last this is my last explanation where they did was they did this is a typical isro's way of doing see, their mantra is seeing is believing you got to see you say that sir i have made one iot it will do wonders the isro guy will say can you show me how does it work so what they did was they did cold test they did hot test what are cold test they assembled the whole vikram put it in a chopper and made sure that all the nine sensors are working and then they took the uh, vikram and dropped it from almost 100 just like the crane which i am seeing at the back this literally dropped the vikram and say can you demonstrate you were firing and all and holding on and hovering vikram did all that i'll show you in the next slide have a look next yeah you can see that uh, the chopper carried and made sure that all the uh, uh, so they had lot of this thing uh, craters at the bottom they wanted to see whether they are getting a signature that yes crater is there please don't land uh, if flat space is there please go ahead and land all those tests were done by chopper and then they dropped it from the crane which you see right at your back simply dropped it and made the vikram to bloody i'm sorry for this bloody get down smoothly and the vikram did get down very smoothly next no yeah so uh, this is uh, being an instrument scientist i try to do what i am good at it so india carried huge amount of instruments i wish i will go into the details uh, dev jyoti i'm almost through getting through okay okay i think that i got a signal so uh, these instruments are there i'll run the no i don't have time next one believe me believe me, one sec one sec believe me all these instruments were built here in india they were state of the art uh, they they were they were never tried on the moon isro tried for the first time on the moon and you you all saw that all the four instruments uh, churned out their data and they were available on the tv you are watching next next one yeah so uh, i work just to 1 km diagonally across uh, in the lane of uh, Uh, Rai Durga Metro Station. There we are building uh, sat small satellites. My CEO has worked for Planet Labs. This guy is 45 years old. He has built 300 satellites, and uh, I'm so fascinated to work with him. Uh, and uh, we we built one 6U cube sat. We are pre presently breaking. This is not salesman pitch, but I'm just trying to say that being a scientist, I want to build one satellite which is unique. just in 24 kilograms and you can see at the bottom uh, 25 kilograms 100 watts and if you compare uh, the comparison uh, the european union built the similar satellite for 800 million dollars here in raidurgam galli we are trying to make it for 3 to 4 uh, million dollars uh, you may say that uh, can you do it yes i can do it uh, i just thought about a comparison if i am going to the moon i don't need a iphone i can do it with nokia 3310 
that's my plan next N yeah yeah so india has become actually a powerhouse of space born instrumentation take it from me india would lead the the space born instrumentation remember the guy who built the sme who built for uh, a commercial mass spectrometer you know you can have tons of instruments uh, chandrayaan 1 um, uh, then the mom and all that so many instruments are there these are the aditya's instruments state of the art built right here in india so india is is is, is a powerhouse you got to believe me is standing right on the cusp of doing exceedingly well so as my uh, title of my talk said that moon and beyond and we are really scaled up and we are ready to go no matter which planet you name it we have it next yes thank you very much thank you questions. so i can take questions if they want you would you would you like to have any questions sir we are not knowledgeable as you are uh, we are not as knowledgeable half of that spectrometer and everything you being an engineer was like going up but, but sir please step up right in the middle let's all just give him a big round of applause i want everybody please let's have a big round of applause for him and i'd like to call upon the chief executive officer of the telangana academy for skill and knowledge mr shrikant sinha on stage to please honor makbul sir and along with him j choudhry sir can we have you on stage please j choudhry sir doctor sir on stage please and let's let's keep let's actually do this इन्होंने कहा है कि 800 मिलियन डॉलर का जो एक सैटेलाइट बनता है उसको ये चार मिलियन पे लेकर आने वाले हैं उनको वेल विशेष देने के लिए लेट्स ऑल गिव अ राउंड ऑफ अपलॉज एज अ वे ऑफ सेइंग ऑल द बेस्ट गो एंड एंड डू इट मेक इंडिया प्राउड